Scratch Fist. It's a Scratcher. Reggae time. Most of the things I build are a combination of odd images and mechanisms and this time I'm going to build a mobile touring clock using the wonderful power of hydraulics like this digger here. The first thing I need to build a travelling clock is the right vehicle. And here she is. Yeah, I mean I think it will really do the job very well. Beautiful lines. It's sort of uh, big enough and butch enough for the boys, but it's got some very nice feminine curves, I think, to it as well. Well, I really like the, the basic idea of clocks. They entertain on the hour. It is like a little small theatre performance for two minutes every hour. The Newport clock, that was, I think, the largest clock I've built. The devil comes out, points upwards and the skeletons come out with the hourglass and shake their heads. And then the whole thing breaks in two. And then you go into the other sequence, which is basically about a series of angel mechanics who fall asleep every hour and have to be woken by a cuckoo to wind the clock back up again. I work quite a lot in theatre, and uh, I really like that theatrical element and the tension that builds up. <laughs> this was a commission for a street show that was a travelling hot dog caravan and they wanted something to happen with a sausage so I decided that bursting out of the floor would be the best solution. So uh, we used a large hydraulic cylinder to lift the whole thing up. So this is the uh, hydraulic cylinder here. This is what actually pushes the flap down and lifts the caravan up. They wanted a finale piece at the end of the show. The caravan, I thought, looked like a giant toaster, really. So the idea of a, a piece of toast coming out of the roof seemed to be a good one. I didn't really know how to power it. There were a few ideas, hydraulic cylinder pushing it up, um, hand crank, all either very too slow or too clumsy. So in the end, we actually built a sort of giant sash window with counterweights on ropes and pulleys. So the simple thing now is all you have to do is give it a push. And up it goes. I always wanted to build a large figure after seeing sort of pictures of the construction of the Statue of Liberty where you've got these giant hands crammed between the floor and ceiling in a workshop in Paris, these little figures standing at the side of it. The idea, large figure, well, it's eventually changed into an angel. It seemed a more, a, a, quite a suitable image on the back of the truck. Sort of peering over as it drove down the motorway over the cab. But then there's a total contrast on the inside. There's this burnt out shell of a car, contrasting in sort of texture of finish, but also of, of the images. We'll have three forms of power that will activate the various movements on the clock. Hydraulic, pneumatic, and electric. So this is the hydraulic system that's going to go into the truck. It will power all the uh, motion on, e on all the various parts of it. And this is the hydraulic power pack, which is battery powered, and it's basically an electric pump that pumps hydraulic fluid under very high pressure into the cylinders. And I can simply demonstrate that by 
disconnecting. Turning the motor on. And there the fluid squirts out. Once it's connected to the cylinders, it actually can push out about 1,000 to 1,500 PSI. So, working on the surface area of the piston, these cylinders, this one could lift possibly five tons and this could possibly lift about two tons. Right. If I just G-clamp it on, yeah. Yeah. missing. Well, another form of power that I want to use in the truck is pneumatics. It's the same sort of family as hydraulics, but it's powered by air rather than hydraulic fluid being forced into the cylinder. The modern pneumatics are just really simple push fit, chop a bit of plastic off, bung it in the hole, and then. There you go. Another difference between the two systems is that air is compressible, whereas the hydraulic fluid isn't. So the hydraulics act immediately that you start pumping, whereas the air takes that little bit of time just to compress before the actual motion takes place. The outside of the angel is being clad in beaten aluminium. As the car actually tips up, you see the underside of the, the car, the floor pan. And this looks a bit like a sort of tombstone with these wings out of the side, which is quite an ominous image. So the idea of making the, then the engine compartment turn into a jukebox with lots of little fairy lights. So this is the hydraulic cylinder that powers the car up. It's off an old tipper lorry, and it's a single acting cylinder because it just has to power the car one way, and it's the weight of the car returning that brings the fluid back and closes the cylinder. So this is the drum machine that's going to go into the back of the truck. It's powered by um, an old windscreen wiper motor out of a car which are just really powerful, strong motors, um, but geared down, so it gives you a very nice, slow, rotational movement. I, I couldn't actually stop it if I tried to hold it. Don't watch that. Watch this. It's a scratch. Sunny Leeds, first performance. Um, it's going dark, which is really nice because it'll look loads better in the dark. But the idea of actually taking it to different venues is brilliant. So it's great, it'll go to fairs, festivals, theatre festivals local parks and then just perform on the hour through the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> 